Hey fans, so today I'm gonna to be working on a little bit of sheetrock and a little bit of trim. Um, and I'm gonna be working in several different areas of the house. So I need to texture this. It's kind of frustrating because really all that's gonna show is this little inch and a half piece between trim probably. But you know what, it's gotta get done. The sooner it gets done, the sooner I'm done with this house and the sooner I can work on this aquarium. So I've cleared all the junk out from under my aquarium and what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask this off because I don't want overspray all over the place. Alright, so I'm going to be using plastic and the key to getting this stuff to cut cleanly is a sharp knife. So that looks like it's about enough. If you don't have a sharp knife, you will struggle and struggle and struggle to get this stuff to cut and it will just be your worst nightmare. Which it might be anyway, because it's, it's pretty, um, it just goes everywhere. So I'm using um, duct tape, D-U-C-T, not D-U-C-K. And um, what I found is there's several different varieties, but if in a Home Depot, if you go to the area where they sell air conditioning, they have this stuff available for $3. It's just basic generic duct tape. It works fine. There's no need to buy Gorilla Tape or anything else because all you gotta do is hold this on for a little while and then you want it to come off. So you don't want a super aggressive adhesive. So let's find this. And that looks good right there. Oh, you know what? That's covering up some of the area I need to hit. <sighs> Took me a lot of trial and error to figure out which type of duct tape would work best. I don't want the texture where I know I have to put trim um, because all that's going to do is make my life difficult. So that'll let the texture run underneath the trim but it'll keep it out of my way. And either works just fine. Okay, so that gets me over there, and then I'll just work my way down. And this side does not need to be typed quite or taped quite as rigorously. Um, it'll be just fine. We need to take, we need to mask off this piece so nothing gets on the aquarium. All right, folks, so I'm going to uh, texture the sheetrock that's up here. I'll adjust the camera in just a minute. But first, I need to, um, take my mud that I've mixed up, and this is standard ready-mix mud. You um, dump a box, um, they, they come in like little five pound boxes. Well, they're not five pounds, but they, they come in boxes. It's about $6. You dump a box in a bucket, you add about a gallon and a half of water, and you mix vigorously with um, an appropriate mixer. And then 
What I like to do is I take a second bucket and I fill up my texture machine's hopper. Now, the way this works is air, an air hose attaches here, air comes in, sprays out, and through the Venturi effect, it pulls texture with it, and depending on the thickness, it will, and the tip size determines what you get on the wall. Now, I've done the whole house, so I, I have this sort of dialed in. It's the right tip size. I know approximately what my, my consistency is. I use about 40 PSI of air, and that produces the effect that I want on my walls and my ceiling. So with that said, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm a little nervous in that I really don't want this crap on my camera, but and I don't want the overspray somewhere it doesn't belong. Good news is it's easy to clean up if it does go somewhere. So first things first, I set that in there, and what that bucket does is it holds it, and when I'm not spraying, I set it back in here, and the goop that oozes out of it will drop into there. Now, if I was doing a fairly large area, I might put more in here, but I don't have that much to do, so I'm only gonna put a little bit in here. And the best way to describe this consistency is pancake batter. You want to go for something that's about the consistency of pancake batter or waffle batter. That's what works for me. You may have other mechanisms that work for you. Okay, so I've got the camera adjusted and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hook up the air hose and I'm going to spray this. So I hold it like this and you can see that I'm getting some, some dribble. I don't seem to have any pressure. There we go. Now, I don't have enough pressure, so I'm going to go turn my pressure up because I'm getting dots that are too big. So I'm running a lot of air hose and that has the effect of reducing my available pressure. And my mix is a little bit thinner than it really should be, but it's okay, it will do what I need it to. Now, I'm going for a heavy texture. So I'm basically done at that point. That's all there was to texturing this space. What I'm gonna do now is break down my equipment and move to the next space that I need to texture and spread some protective blankets out. Okay, so this is gonna take about 30 seconds to spray. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook up my machine, get it sprayed, and then take down this uh, masking. And then I have to mask the other area by the door to my office. Um, and by the aquarium. And that's going to be a little bit more complicated, but yeah, you know, it takes longer to mask the stuff than it does to spray it, but that's better than spending a lot of time cleaning it up. And there we are. So I've got to clean up some stuff at the stop, top while it's wet because uh, it'll come up right off. And then I'm going to take down this masking, which, you know, the masking's not very difficult to do. And uh, when I'm done, I'll just throw this furniture blanket in the uh, washer. So I've got one little spot on the tile where some stuff got through, 
but overall I'm really happy with the result and remember trim is going to cover this so I'm not worried about the fact there's a little stripe there because trim is going to come out to pass these uh, ears on this door frame. So this area is way more complicated because you can see here I've got the aquarium coming right up to the edge of the wall so what I'm going to have to do is get some material in between here and um, this is like I said this is just a much more complicated area to mask off. No big deal. Plastic is cheap. So I'm going to start with a small piece of plastic and I'm just going to work it in here. Now, if you had to put tape on the front of your, or on your aquarium, you want to use the least tacky tape you can find, which happens to be this blue, the blue stuff with the orange print from, from um, 3M. It doesn't stick to anything, hardly. So that's perfect because I do not want any residue left on my aquarium because, as we all know, acrylic is very, very di difficult to clean. Now, on the top, I'm not as concerned because I just don't care if there's a little smudge on the top. So I'll use regular blue tape up here. And now let me tape this other side. A handful of uh, furniture blankets, so I'm gonna I'm gonna do this a little bit differently. I'm not gonna put a furniture blanket down for uh, to protect the floor for what's gonna be 10 seconds of spraying. Okay, one more little area that needs to be done. I think I'll just wipe it off. So we're ready. Need to refill. The bucket. That should be fine. And now we'll spray. Okay, so now that's done, I've got a little bit of stuff on the floor. I'm going to go ahead and clean this up, get this, use the, the towels that I clean up will go in the washer, the plastic's going to go in the trash, and then I'll set up for the next area. Okay, so you know, those of you that watch all my videos know that uh, I started this project in early December, and here it is early February, two months later. Mm, you know, it's really not that much work. I just haven't gotten around to it and I've procrastinated, procrastinated. So I'm going to finish this patch job. I'm going to texture it and then I'll be painting and that's really downhill from here. So first things first, I need to add texture to my bucket or my bucket, my um, hopper. I knocked a lamp over there. No big deal. If that's the if that's the worst thing that happens, then we're having a great day. Um, all right. Ah. 
All right. Bravo. So, this wall's textured. I can see I've got a couple of boogers that'll have to be picked. But you know what? This will work. It's done. Let me pull the masking down, wash my hands, reset for the two spots in the hallway or the stairway, and get it done. Okay, so unfortunately the angles for um, filming in the stairway and the upstairs closet that needs to be done, th those angles just aren't going to work. So I'm going to conclude today's video and um, this has been textured. This is actually a streak of drywall material. It's not a run in my texture. Um, and so the next step is to let this dry for at least 24 hours, at which point it should be hard. And then I can come back and apparently my texture is not as consistent as I'd like it to be because I see some little lumps that were spat out by the gum gun. I will come back and pick those off and, throw, and just chuck them. It's not a big deal. Um, once it's dry, I'll prime it and then I'll paint it and then I'm done. Thanks for watching my video. I hope you found this interesting, inspirational, and maybe educational or entertaining. Please feel free to share my video, like my video, and leave a comment. Keep in mind, all comments are moderated because unfortunately some people cannot behave themselves on the internet. And so to stop people from leaving insulting things or things that are spam with links to inappropriate websites, I just moderate all the comments. And if your comment is neutral or positive, it will be posted. If it's respectful and negative, it'll be posted. If it is hateful, it will not be allowed. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.